In today's video, we're going to zoom into the NASDAQ futures market. We'll look at the volatility inside of the actual futures market and compare and contrast that with the volatility we saw inside of two large cap stocks. One of these stocks is even a top 10 holding inside of the QQQ ETF. Now to get started, we can zoom into the NQ futures in that morning hour when the markets first open. Now, once the markets opened, the NQ futures were very clearly the ones that were more volatile when you compare them to the other three index markets. Out of our four indices, NQ was the most volatile. The way we can make that statement is by seeing price action very clearly hit our volatility box zones and we bounce from there compared to, say, the other index markets like the S&P, which don't even get close to hitting our volatility zones. The S&P got close with this candle, but not quite enough. The Dow had even less volatility compared to the NQ futures. The Russell, a similar story. So the NASDAQ futures were very clearly the ones that were volatile to start off the day. Now, after that initial morning hour, as soon as the 7 a.m. Pacific hour started, we had a little bit of a sell-off inside of NQ. Now in this sell-off is where our first stock setup comes into play. On our stock volatility box live scanner in that sell-off, Pepsi was the stock which triggered. Now Pepsi hit our volatility live scanner for an hourly breach on the aggressive volatility box models for a long side setup. So let's take a look at the setup inside of Pepsi. Here I have the chart loaded on a two minute time frame. We can see the sell-off taking place inside of Pepsi, which takes us into our aggressive volatility box levels. Now here we have price action give us one and two edge signal confirmations, and we then see a momentum cross after which the momentum very clearly shifts. So Pepsi was a long side setup, but the actual setup inside of Pepsi, the momentum cross came towards that 7.46 a.m. Pacific mark. So about 46 minutes into the hour, the initial breach took place early on in the beginning portions of the hour. Now coming back to the NQ futures, you'll see that this little blip essentially reverses by about 7.15 a.m. Pacific. So for 30 extra minutes, we saw that additional volatility inside of Pepsi, whereas the NQ futures had already started its reversal. Now the actual short setup inside of the futures market triggered when price action breached our upper volatility box sign entry lines. We had price action breach the sign entry line with this green candle, and we then had the edge signal confirmation, which told us that, hey, we're officially now in overbought territory. The rules of our fade setup were met when we had an opportunity to enter at the sign line or better. If I zoom out, this is what ended up happening inside of the NQ futures. We had price action chop around, we even went outside of the volatility box clouds by essentially one tick before price action then reversed. Now in the same period when we had the short side setup, that's when the second stock hit our live scanner. Now the second stock triggered shortly after Pepsi. So here was Pepsi and the live scanner prints in chronological order. So as I go up, these are stocks that printed after Pepsi shortly after. We'll see Zillow, Coinbase, Roblox, but the stock we want to zoom in on is Intel. Intel here triggered a short side opportunity via the aggressive volatility box models. And around the same time, you also had Uber, Twilio, Airbnb. So you had a variety of different stocks to pick and choose from. Now, if we come into a chart of Intel, here's what a chart of Intel looked like at the same time the NQ short side setup was triggering. Here, this is a setup we should recognize at this point. We had price breaching our aggressive volatility box models. We got close to our conservative clouds, but a little shy of that. We had one, two, three, four, five, and six Keltner channel wedges plotting. That tells us that, hey, price action is trading outside of the 3.0 Keltner channels. We had the edge signal confirmation here, which tells us we're officially now in overbought territory. And we had the momentum cross with this pink dot right here, which tells you that the momentum is now reversing. The three EMA has crossed below the eight. So this was the same short side setup that we were looking at inside of the NQ futures, but this time inside of a stock instead, this is Intel. 
and we also looked at Pepsi, which was the long side setup when we had the initial little sell off here inside of the NQ futures. So hopefully through today's video, you saw not only how the futures volatility box models translate to the stock volatility levels, but how the live scanner finds you stocks based off of first off, if you're looking for long or short setups and in what sorts of markets you're looking for. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.